G'day guys, Jesse here from the True Footy YouTube channel. Just a little disclaimer today before you start watching the podcast. Unfortunately, Bush and I recorded this 48 minute finals preview and uh, we thought as a channel we were out of the woods a little bit with technical difficulties, but unfortunately you can never see a corrupt memory card coming. So basically what's happened is we've got the podcast audio and we've got one camera working but the camera with Busher, which is the less important camera, uh, actually did not record the footage properly. So, pretty much had two choices. It was either can the whole episode or just release it with uh, just one camera working. We thought, uh, you know, we think the potty's pretty good and we don't wanna put our time to waste. So, we've uploaded it anyway. Uh, again, apologize for the technical glitch. And uh, we're going to do another podcast again soon this week, reviewing the 10 teams that missed the finals and their seasons as well. So, so we do promise that by then we will have both cameras working and we'll be back to normal in no time. Anyway, guys, thanks. I hope you enjoy the episode. Cheers. All right. G'day and welcome to True 40 Podcast 34. This True time 40 bit. Podcast, did you just say? I said True 40. Sounded like 40 to me. Uh, I can never get the intro right. Last time I said it was True 40 Podcast 34 and it was True 40 Podcast 33 bunch of people in the comments about it but to clear confusion it is yeah. true the true footy podcast yep. and it is number 34 how are you today busher yeah pretty good just walk the dog so he doesn't give us the shits is that a euphemism <laughs> could be however <laughs> you choose to interpret it <laughs> you don't own a dog <laughs> just kidding he does own a very very large dog um so to speak but um yeah okay interesting time yeah. of the football season this is usually the time of the year where we do the most podcasts in a short space of time because it's finals. Last year we did a weekly podcast and this is not normally a weekly podcast. We normally do it like once a month. Sporadically. Yeah, but um, we'll try and get together once a week leading up to the finals and do like up to 30 minute podcasts or something like that um, and just go week by week talking through the finals. So um, before we get into the games, Busher, what say you give us yeah. a little reaction to the All-Australian team which was selected during the week. What were your general thoughts? I was pretty happy with it. it was, I'd also say it was pretty obvious that Glenn Jakovic was a dominant voice in that committee. A lot, a lot of WA guys were well represented, which was surprising considering That's true. particularly Victorian-dominated panel sort of thing. That's true. There were four Eagles and two Dockers. I mean, yeah. I think the two Dockers were pretty walk-up starts, weren't they? Walters was... Cause Ablett could have gone that spot. There's a couple of guys that could have were worthy of that spot Walters got, but Walters was definitely right in the thick of that conversation and deserving, in my estimations at least. That's true. That's true. Did you think there was anything anyone snubbed or someone that was Ooh. lucky to get in? No real like guys that didn't deserve to get in, so it's sort of hard to... There's guys that, if they'd made it as well, you wouldn't have complained, but... Ablett didn't get picked, though. No. Nah. No. My, nah. my one that I was thought was a bit stiff was Zorko. Dusty, maybe, actually, for me. True, because Dusty is a funny one where he was so good in the second half of the year and he might yeah. be a bolter to be top five in the Brownlow and yet, yeah, it wasn't All-Australian. That, uh, that's pretty rare. It was Angus Brayshaw was third in the Brownlow. I don't think he was All-Australian last year, he, was he? I doubt, yeah, I, I don't seriously think he doubt was. It. Yeah, I don't think so, he yeah, was. I guess that does happen sometimes. But, yeah. Um, yeah, but generally a good team, despite all the um, hysteria about Fife being captain over. Yeah, a few people were triggered by that one. Yeah, I thought I thought it was a pretty disrespectful to Fife. I, I put something on Instagram about it. I don't think I don't think Hearn was that much better a captain uh-huh. that people are like, why are you picking Fife? Even though Fife's probably going to go top three in the Brownlow, in my opinion, something like that. But that's the kind of thing with their award. Some years they treat it as like a give it to a good player. Other years they'll give it to like a Bob Murphy type who's been a good soldier, done their role, Mm. but isn't necessarily a superstar of the game. They're inconsistent with the criteria of picking the captain, which is where I can see where people have issues sort of thing. 100%. But Fife at least is a captain. Whereas last year they chose Buddy Franklin for the legacy which was just completely random. I don't understand. How did he even go last year? I can't even recall if he had a particularly notable season last year. Um, you're testing my memory because 12 months ago, it seems a long time ago. I'm pretty yeah. sure when Buddy's playing and he's on the field, he's playing really well. I don't mm. remember him actually having a lean trot. Even this year when he's been on the park, he's been really good. Uh, uh, he's just barely got on the park. That's the thing. Mm. Um, no, I think he went pretty well, but it's more about what is the criteria? Is it a legacy award now? Or are you picking the best leader or is it the best player on the field who happens to be a captain because mm. um, that's generally what it's been I think like yeah. but and, and you'd say Fife under that criteria is probably the best player on that field that was the captain yeah. and Hernan, what if no one who was a captain of their team made the all Australian? yeah team? you'd have to pick someone like yeah. um, was Rance all Australian Rance was captain? a captain yeah yeah and he's, he's not actually a captain so oh. no that's yeah. interesting um, 
But, I mean, last year, Shannon Hearn was the premiership captain or at least a top two team at the time because we yeah. hadn't won the flag yet. I felt like he was the obvious choice. This year, I don't think Hearn was the obvious choice. I heard the argument saying because all the premiership and that stuff happened after last year's All-Australian but people were trying to count it in the argument. Sure, but we did finish top two that yeah. year. So Yeah, but I meant they say, they're trying to argue for this year that the fact right. it was the premiership captain last year should be relevant this year. Gotcha. That was yeah. the argument people were trying to make because it didn't apply to last year's All-Australian team. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Anyway, we kind of get, but it's a regular season award, I'd say. Yeah, sure. I agree. I agree with that. We won't linger on it too much because I think it's really just a WA thing, the people that are crying about her not being captain. But um, anyway, Um, in other news... Triggered West Coast fans. Natalie Fife is the captain. (laughs) How dare they? Shannon is the GOAT. I'm pretty sure that's going to be very, very loud in the mics. Yeah, a lot um, of loud, obnoxious Eagles fans. When you say Natalie Five, I'm pretty sure there's one bloke who calls him Natalie Five. And, and it's Freo Doka. It's, it's Freo <laughs> yeah. Doka, yeah. I love that page. Exactly. Um, anyway, in other news, other award news, we'll run through quickly. Um, Cripps was voted the MVP by the Players Association. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, you can argue that because if he was, wasn't in Carlton, they'd be... I wouldn't say staffed, but they've they've shown, especially once Tay came in, that their other guys can contribute more than they perhaps did under Bolton. Yeah. But Cripps is still the yeah heartline of that team. So. Interesting selection because he's not one that's or maybe up until this year wasn't ever talked about as being the best player in the comp. This year it has come up a little bit, but no. I don't think he's. I still don't think he's as good as you know Danger Dusty or Five. I still no. I still have those guys ahead just for me. Uh, yeah, nonetheless, he's, he's he's catching, but not yeah, there yet. that's true. I mean, he's yeah. way younger than those yeah, guys yeah. as well. So it's he probably will get yeah. to that level. Um, what I think is a better award, in my opinion, and this is an interesting debate, is Marcus Bondrapilli has won the coaches award. Now, I think that is the best award we have. I think it's better than the Brownlow. I think it's better than the MVP. The MVP is a little bit arbitrary. You kind of, I mean, there's a lot of people voting, but it's kind of just like you. You're just asking someone their opinion on who's the best. Whereas uh-huh. at least the coaches award, it's a breakdown and it's indicative uh-huh. of their season. The coaches who I think are much more qualified to give votes, um, give votes r- over the umpires. You know, imagine how uh-huh. hard it would be if you weren't allowed to look at a stat sheet and you were the umpire of a game giving votes. You're much more likely uh-huh. to make errors than say if a coach um, who's watching the game will. Um, I mean, th- I think what the coaches do as well is reward defensive players yeah. a lot more so like a tagger who's done a really good job or even we'll key never... backs like yeah. alex pierce was always a guy that did okay in coaches votes and yeah stuff. brad shepherd i think it was, i don't know how many votes he gets but just an example is probably someone who would do better in votes but he's never going to get yeah. Brownlow votes yeah um so yeah that's why i think it's a better award and i think it's really interesting that bond and pelly's won it um he's had a fantastic year but he's another one that doesn't um i mean i think Maybe he's not statistically the best midfielder on his team, but yeah. impact-wise, when he he's used to the ball, like he can, like McRae gets more of it, but Bont's classier, more mm. aerodynamic. It's maybe well, it's aer- just, just my perception, but I think Cripps gets talked up more than Bont does at the moment. Yeah, and yet Bont and Pelly's won what I think is a better award. Mm. It's it's a really interesting debate who's a better player out of those two. Yeah, especially same draft as well. They yeah. even said it on the All Australian broadcast when yeah. they were interviewing the two of them. Bont and Cripps are definitely probably going to be the two, um, at least two of the best players in the competition. Sort of like Kelly. Fife, Danger, Dusty. Yeah. Um, it's going to be Bont, um, Cripps, maybe Josh Kelly is the third All one. All three up. of them, great draft here, yeah. 95ers. Yep. Great um, age. Yeah. But anyway, we won't get... This isn't a debate about who's better about a Bond and Pelly Cripps. That seems like a real good off-season topic discussion. Yeah. Um, but we have something that probably is, yeah, way more important than any of those things we discussed, and that is finals. Just a smidge more important. Just a smidge more important. So we'll go through... Um, like I said, don't want to make this a too lengthy a podcast today, but we'll go through all four games yeah. and give some predictions and just have a few cheeky little comments about them all. So... We'll start chronologically. How about that? We'll go West Coast versus Essendon because that is the Thursday night game at Optus Stadium. First, let's look at the home team. What do you feel about it being a Thursday? Quickly, is that not, not um, here nor there for you? Or uh, no, I don't. I don't like it. You're not a fan. It's. I don't no. care if it was in Melbourne because uh. I um, won't attend. Uh. But just thinking selfishly as a West Coast fan who would ideally like to go to the game, I didn't actually uh. end up getting tickets, but. Um, a Thursday night is a bit of a pain. Yeah. Um, and I do early starts sometimes on a Friday. So, uh, yeah, it's a pain in the ass for people who go to the yeah. games. Yeah, that's what I would say. But, I mean, like, generally speaking, um, if it was Geelong and Collingwood on a Thursday yeah. night, I'd be like, oh, great, there's footy on. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so like to start off, what we'll go through West Coast. What is your perception on West Coast and how they've tracked this year? And how happy do you think they'd be to be in the position they're in? They'd be ropeable, but they've blown top four. They'd be guarded about that. No double chance. Mm. For any interstate team, as you've alluded to in other videos, it's just crucial to mm-hmm. have that home field double chance, especially Perth where the travel's quite lengthy. That's true. Yep. So the the situation for them now is that um, because of their loss to Hawthorne in round 23, they're going to have one home game against Essendon. Best case scenario after that, if they win, they're going to have three away trips in a row, which are going to involve going to Melbourne in week two and then coming back to Perth and going back to either Queensland or Melbourne again in the same week. And then if they make the grand final somehow, they're going to do the exact same thing again. It's almost worth setting up base in Melbourne if you beat Essendon, I reckon. That's true, but I don't think the players would like that, being away from their families. And I think there's something to be said for having your your normal routine um, during finals kept as normal as possible. I I know that players have talked about that before, particularly in grand final week, just trying to keep it normal. Um, That's why some players don't like to fly over until quite late, or some clubs rather, so... um, but yeah, no, it is an interesting mm. debate if you if you're gonna. But yeah. I mean, like in in the prelim, they might be going to Queensland anyway. Yeah. So it's a tricky one. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. So to, I guess to characterise West Coast season, started poorly, put themselves under pressure. They were three and three with a horrendous percentage, and that forced them to have to go on a real good run. Um, and they played really well in that ten game run or whatever it was, a fourteen game run actually, and then just ran out of steam in the last two weeks. And I think by the time they played Richmond in the wet. They're just a little bit fatigued. Mm. And I think mentally they were a bit zapped in round 23. And as a fan, I'm happy with the Premiership defence. As a whole, we only want, lost one more game than last year. So I, mean, I think the Eagles were a little bit unlucky. I mean, they, they deserved to miss the top four because that's how the season panned out. But I don't know if I would say that they choked or anything like that um, now that I've calmed down. Um, but yeah, realistically. That Hawthorne loss was bad though. It, it was a bad loss, but we had bad losses last year mm. too. Really bad losses, so um, that's fairly normal. And yes, obviously, I think it was just a case of the Eagles mentally, as I just said, came off 14-game streak or whatever it was and then played Richmond. Um, that and was got a mini-grand final. At their peak, like Richmond True. was in that hot streak. They knew they had a long stint at the MCG. True. They and were feeling pretty good. That was a mini-grand final for the Eagles. And I think when we lost that game, the equation became... Um, best case scenario we're going to play Brisbane in week one of the finals it, I, re- I suspect it would have been hard for them to mentally be like alright round 23 we've got to win you know what I mean uh-huh. Like they would have been thinking about finals already I suspect uh-huh. and just the emotional upheaval of going through the close MCG loss I just think the Eagles probably struggled to get motivated for that round 23 game and that's what, that was the difference I think they could have, they should have known it could cost them top four though if they I'm sure they knew but they probably didn't approach it with the the Required mindset. That's what I'm thinking. Mm. Um, but yeah, and that's it's just probably going to cost them a flag. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, so the last time these two sides met, it was around 14. West Coast won by 35. They should have won by more. They kicked 14 goals, 22. I think Kennedy kicked like three goals, five or something, uh-huh. even worse than that. Um, is their best good enough? Who Eagles? Yeah. To win the flag, you mean? Or mm-hmm. yeah, if they can pull their fingers out, they've. Shown that they've shaken the away bug thing. They can win away. So I don't think that's as big an issue as it was in the past, but it's going to be an uphill battle. If it all clicks, they've got the ability to do it, but to have it click that long all through September yep, without setting yourself up in the regular season with some home games, some potential breathers, it's going to be hard. Exactly. Nat Nui coming back in, I think, will do them a world of good psychologically. Uh, the contested ball game and and stuff has been terrible and I think yeah. just having his presence will make a difference I don't necessarily think he's the best player in the competition it'll least. help your clearance game that's yeah for sure. yeah but I think that clearance game is good but it's our post clearance contested uh-huh. possession stat and we're like ranked 18th for but nonetheless I just think mentally psychologically uh-huh. that's a big lift for the Eagles there is a new rumour an injury rumour out at the moment the foot thing or whatever it is yeah so um, somebody's broken the rumour on big footy and I put a disclaimer it's big footy so it could be bullshit but um Apparently, there's a key eagle ruled out for the year with a stretch fracture, and they're not announcing it. They might do it as a late out for Eagles and Essendon. The theory states, uh, somebody else came up with a theory that it's Hearn because he didn't attend the All-Australian evening uh. because he probably probably his moon boot would have given something away there. So 
It could be Hearn or Hearn, because Hearn's battling a hammy anyway. Yeah. It could be Hearn or it could be another Eagle. So there's an injury concern on the horizon for the Eagles. Another Eagle. foot related injury at Optus, by I the know. sounds. Yep. So we'll, we'll see if Simo cracks the shoots about that. But let's have a look at Essendon. What's your perception of Essendon this year and how they've gone and how happy should they be? I'd say they've done about what I expect. A lot, ex- other people expect a lot more of them, but this is about what we expect really get in the eight just sort of thing. Mm. That's true. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they have incrementally improved. Yeah. Last year, they had some really, really good performances and some alarmingly bad performances. Mm. This year's a bit the same, I guess. This year, yeah. They've been a little more consistent, but they've still had probably yeah. one of the most alarming performances I've seen in football. Yeah. Honestly, like for a top eight team to lose by 104 points, they were at one point losing by 124 to the Bulldogs, yeah. who were lower than them at the time. That is bizarre. And the week before, they, they lost by like 11 goals at home yeah. to Port, um, maybe more. Um, Essendon, Port Adelaide and Fremantle are the three least consistent football teams I've ever witnessed in my life. This is true. This is true. The holy trinity of inconsistency is those three teams. Yeah, all of those sides have talent. Um, in uh, and Essendon as well have recruited heavy. Yeah. Um, so they, They've missed Devin Smith for a solid patch in there and he mm-hmm. was a real handy player for him when he was on the park. Very true, very true. But I think... I don't know. They just maybe have... I don't want to say questionable culture. That sounds a bit too, like, alarmist. But, like, th- th- there's got to be an explanation for the inconsistency. It just follows Zach Clark around, mate. It's all Zach Clark. <laughs> <laughs> they have steadied in the last month. Sorry, in the last fortnight. So, they we saw them play as a free man in Perth. Um, yeah. And they, they won. They were a bit too classy for the Dockers. But, again, if you look at the stats, free man will probably... Well, mm. I wouldn't say should have won the game, but they, they dominated all the stats yeah. you'd expect. Of Freya had the ball, it's just they butchered it. Exactly right, yeah. Uh, and uh, Collingwood-Essendon, it was a good game. Essendon pushed them, and I think Collingwood are the real deal as well. Um, did you think it was interesting that S- Essendon had no All-Australians? Not really. I can't really... They're more an even spread of talent rather than top end. That's true. Yeah, Merritt they- was probably the one. But yeah. again, it's midfield. so hard. Yeah, it's so hard yeah. to crack that all Australian midfield. Yeah. Um, so there's been a little bit of conjecture in the media, a little bit of talk that Wusher could be sacked regardless of whether Essendon win this week. So even if they Ooh. beat West Coast, people uh. are suggesting that Wusher could lose his job and that it was a decision that was probably made after the Bulldogs loss. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's a tough one because the, he has had that inconsistency with that team. you you might want someone at the helm that provides a steady, more consistent, mm. can get them playing that brand, but they want to be playing. It's his second year, right? It's only his second year, right? Wusher. Three or four, isn't it? He's been there a while, I think. Should we Google it? Could be worth a Google. Why don't you just like hum a tune while I Google this? Because... Um, <laughs> let's have a look. Cause, yeah, so I think it's been three, four at least. Maybe you're right. Because he came in straight after her, didn't he? Excuse my ignorance. Oh, no, head coach in 2015. Yeah, oh, he's been God. around for young. Might just edit this out then. It feels, <laughs> like, it feels like he's only just been there. But you're right, he's the first coach yeah. after her, right? Yeah. Mm, okay, so that changes my opinion a little bit mm. because I was thinking, all right, he's getting a team to incrementally improve. Uh, but now if he's been there four years and Essendon... They've looked inconsistent. Essendon in played play. finals in 2017 as well. So it's not like he's uh. lifted them out of the mile. They probably yeah. are underachieving, actually. Mm. Yeah. Um, I don't... Like I said, though, I don't necessarily think underachieving. I think they're right where their talent okay. should put them, I think. Sure. Like in that bottom half of the top eight sort of thing. Yeah, I agree. Um, I guess when I say underachieving, I mean... I'm referring to the inconsistent performances. Yeah, really, and people... Right. Exter- like, even going into the season, everyone's like, Essendon top four, Smokey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was all a bit a bit over the top, I think. Just a um, smidge. Yeah, I, did, I had Essendon... I think I had Essendon seventh in my final prediction, so... Um, I'm a gun yeah. No um, So they might have a few players back It looks like Heppel, Fantasia, Hooker and Francis All might be available for this game as well yeah. um, specific- Hurley's a maybe as well isn't he? Yeah I'm not too sure actually Yeah because I know he got injured in the last game But it was like a popped his shoulder out So it might be back in time I don't know if he was listed on the injury list I had a look this yeah. morning But um, yeah you might be right But either way um, What are their chances for this game Essendon? They won over here last year against West Coast They the, 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 they're two different base but they won over here a few weeks ago so they mm. definitely can win in Perth sure it's not beyond Essendon to win in Perth that's for sure 
probably won't happen though realistically eagles should pull their fingers out start playing a more methodical cut through essendon mm. Mm. they need to um the eagles need to lift their contested game and if they do that which i'm hoping they do I'm going to tip West Coast by 15 points. I think it's going to be a close game. I don't think the Eagles are good enough to tear Essendon yeah. apart. I think Essendon are going to throw a lot at this game and they can definitely win. But I think with the Eagles getting Nat Nui back and the fact that um, they would have been gutted after last week, I reckon they'll be motivated to get the win. I was reading a, I was wait, reading a finals preview. It was written by Ladbrokes, I believe, but they were like offering sort of prospective bets as well as sort of giving a bit of a preview. And they reckoned Eagles 40-plus. Yeah, I don't. I reckon I don't. the Eagles will kill them because I think Essendon allows like one a really high amount of inside fifties and stuff, and the Eagles oh, okay. are good at capitalising on inside fifties. Yeah, right. Okay, so I that think makes they, sense. they're sort of projecting there might be a bit of a storm in that aspect in favour sure. of the Eagles. I think if the Eagles wake up and switch on for this game, mm. then forty plus is possible. Yeah, they they need to be. If they don't wake, if they don't show up, switched on, anything can happen. Really, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So, what's your tip? I'd probably say Eagles twenty five. Okay. Fair enough. Cool. All right, so we'll move on to the Friday night game, uh, and I'm hoping we might be able to live stream this one. I don't know if you're around. I should be. I might be. Yeah, fingers crossed. I don't think... Uh, I, I think I'm around, so um, uh, hopefully Joyce can join us, but if not, that's all right. We'll, we'll give it a crack. Um, Geelong Collingwood at the MCG. First, let's talk about Geelong. How, would you, how do you perceive them as a football club right now um, in, in the context of how they perform this year and uh, how realistic a threat they are? They're definitely a threat. Like, they're top of the ladder. They're going to get... Sort of home run to the grandy with the GMHBA controversies that have been going on. But what do you think about that? Just as a I think it's point. unfair myself. I okay. think they should be allowed to play down there. 100%. Yeah. So, um, just to take a little side point there, Chris Scott made a really good point when he said he accepts the decision a few weeks ago, but the AFL was probably opened a can of worms with themselves because. Yeah, yeah, when Gold Coast and GWS yeah. is, get like 10,000 people crowds and stuff. Well, GWS is hosting a game this week. Yeah. And it's I, I th- I'm sure it's Giant, Giant Stadium, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just double check that in case I get roasted in the comments. But yeah, I, it I might think, be ANZ and we cop it, but yeah, I, don't I don't think, think it is. I, didn't they, I don't think you can play at ANZ anymore. Yeah, they've probably... Isn't it like not I'm up not to sure. standard? I could be talking shit. I think they've... Because I know they're upgrading ANZ over there because I know there's been big controversies even though there's already a pretty good stadium. Yes. And they're pissed off because of the New South Wales government or something. That's right. Blowing um, money on something they don't need to. I think GWS Sydney was at ANZ last year. Uh, the first final. I think so. Because that's um, the biggest seated venue yes. over there. But it's Giant Stadium this weekend. Yeah. Um, it is a bit bullshit. I See, I said... Like, we, we always talk about you know, it's unfair we have to play at the MCG. But I'd never really considered Geelong as an away MCG team because I think they used to play more there more than they did. They're playing at GMHBA more now. But they've actually built the stadium and made it yeah. a nice place to attend, which is more reason why they should be playing games there. But they've got this facility now. Exactly. They can bring in the crowds. Exactly. Um, but I, I always think of them, oh, they're good at the MCG, but I think... They are. They're like four and one this year, I think. At the MCG? Yeah. Are they? Okay, yeah. interesting. Um but nonetheless, it's still an away game for them. Yeah. Whereas, like maybe maybe five years ago, it was more neutral. But now, because they're playing more, the games fact they're playing Collingwood game. as well. Yeah, Collingwood's the biggest Melbourne team in terms of like size. Which is why they would never have let them play a GMHBA. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but you yeah, finish top of the ladder. That's why you finish top of the ladder. Get home field. You mm. shouldn't let these decisions affect the product of the game. Like I understand the significance of them, but in terms of yeah, that you got to be pure to. Yeah, it is important as a game, as a spectacle that we have fairness. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, we can't control that, obviously. No one can other than the league, so we might as well just um, move on with the game. Um, So these guys haven't played each other since round one, interestingly. And Geelong won by seven points, and at the time that was considered a real upset. I remember thinking, gee whiz, Collingwood have um, shouted the bed there. Uh, But uh, as it turns out, Geelong were the better team over the course (laughs) of the season. So I think it's because they underwhelmed last year. There was that perception with them, but they've Very true. done what people were sort of expecting last year. Very true. Probably even more so, really, than what people were expecting even last year when they first got the Holy Trinity together and didn't know what they had in Tim Kelly. That's true. Yeah, Tim Kelly was a massive bonus onto that. Uh, uh, I think both of these times kind of both these teams probably slumped at a good time. They both had yeah. that mid-season slump. Collingwood more so, and more arguably more to injury. But Geelong had a real drop off in form. I think the worst... That mid-late season, even. Geelong's yeah. was more mid-late season than true, mid. True, true. And then I think they've spiked up again. I think they played well against Brisbane in round 22. Uh, that was a good game. They just lost. They weren't as good on the day. 
And uh, round 23, they put Carlton to the sword. I feel like they came out angry. Oh, good for you. You put Carlton to the sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. GMHPA as well, it's probably not that much of a challenge. But nonetheless, Danger came out, put in one of the better individual performances this year. It was a big last round right. for individual performances. Yeah, we, there was a few monster games. We had a tough time voting um, on who was a player of the round. We did have a tough time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Charlie Cameron, what a performance with his last two goals in seven possessions. <laughs> That's a bit of an inside joke, that one. Yeah, um, yeah like I said, I, I think the Cats might have clinked, clicked back into gear in the last two rounds. Danger may have gone 3-3-3 the last three rounds in the Brownlow, so he is primed, uh, primed and ready. And the fact that they've had 135% percentage this year uh, does show how dominant they were at times. It's because comfortably the best percentage in the league, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Mean, that's a pretty decent KPI, I think, percentage. Yeah. Um, in the second half of the year, I feel like the Cats probably... I think that maybe some of their role players dropped off. I think Gary Rowan, for instance, Parfit, Radagalia and Stanley, yeah. just to name a few, were... Stanley ended up getting dropped, if I recall. Yeah, so like yeah. they just had a few tier like, or second or third player yeah. tier players come off... Um, sorry, come out of form, and I think that probably hurt them, especially Gary yeah. Rowan, who was a really important forward for them. Yeah, that middle patch here was really dynamic. The cats are particularly bad off a bye, as well. Yeah, they they do love the bye. Yeah, everyone loves to joke about it. I mean, it's a pretty small sample size. I don't think it's a big deal. Their bye performance, like this year, they lost off the bye against Port in Adelaide, yeah. and that's not an easy trip. It's that's not. Port being inconsistent. Port deciding yeah. to show up and hundred um, percent. Also, I think one little factor here for the Cats is that they've got some aging stars running out of time. So, Danger... Yeah. Actually, Danger's not that old. He's like 28, isn't he? He's close to the 30, isn't he? I swear he's like 30. Oh, sorry, no. What, I was thinking he's five stage, but that's that's a dirty lie. He is born in 1990. So, yeah. he's 30. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just done the quick maths on that. 29 years. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because I only turned twenty four this year. So that quick, quick mass was next year. was bad. I was thinking thirty next year. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. He's born in nineteen ninety. So thirty next year. He's never won a flag. So for him, this might be one of those rare opportunities for him to really probably his best opportunity. Really. Yeah. It is. Yeah. The top of the. he's had so far in his career. Yep. Um, and Gaza obviously is like thirty six. Yeah. Uh, um, he should go to the Gold Coast. <laughs> no. Um, but anyway, we'll move on to the pies. I think they're. I think they're a dark horse. I think they, they could easily win the flag. I think they're as good as Richmond. It's bold. Or at least a good uh, a chance to win as Richmond. On their day, they're as good as Richmond. But Richmond just, just shown that they've found that gear, that 2017 gear and they're mm. back and playing the best they can do. Collingwood's been a bit more up and down. But Collingwood's had, had some darker days. Yeah. The, the, well, yeah, I mean, Richmond were yeah. really poor in the mid-season. Geelong annihilated Richmond, them. Richmond were bloody decimated though at the start of the season. Well, Collingwood had decimated. Yeah, now... Yeah, but that's when they both those teams played shit. Mm. So Richmond got annihilated by Adelaide and Geelong mid-season. But yeah. we won't talk about Richmond too much. Um, but either way, the Collingwood have put themselves in a good position, a little bit fortuitous, sliding into fourth spot because West Coast choked. Yeah. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, they're in a good position and they're going to get players back. To go. He's probably going to be back, side bottom. Stevenson, isn't he coming back? Stevenson I don't know go. if I'd bring him straight back in. Steve-O? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? Because they've still bloody good team like and he's sort of been out of the side they've sort of adjusted yeah. for it other guys have stepped up yeah I think I, I reckon he'll walk straight back in to be honest he's too good yeah. a goal kicker mm. he's an X-factor player I think he'll come in um, Aish will be f- available more I believe potentially Sharonberg if they pick him and Sire yeah. aka Phil in Phil um, adds a little bit of depth um, so I think they're my dark horse and um, they're also experienced and they're going to try and avenge last year. Obviously, they've got that hanging over their heads. They'll yeah. see there's three or four games now they've got to make up for the pain of last year, which would have hurt badly. You know, like as an Eagles fan, we talk about the pain. Oh, sorry. No, we talk about how what it was like to be five goals down in the grand final. What were you thinking? Um, flashback to 2015. That's certainly what I was thinking. But I rarely reflect on how a Collingwood fan would feel after being five goals up. Imagine kicking the first five goals of a grand final. You'd be on top of the world yeah. and the players as well to lose the game in the dying minutes. That would be seriously hard mm. to hard to contemplate. Especially even in that fourth quarter when it got more contested, you, had, you got up a couple of goals. With mm. f- like True. They keep the first two of the last quarter. Yeah. Because yeah. so. that, that's where I'd cashed out on the... Because I'd had bets on both sides. I think I've mm. told the story before. But I'd... Because 
Eagles money. Eagles going to be profitable. I cash down the Eagles thinking, oh, yeah, Collingwood have got this at this point. I'll take the extra Eagles money on top of the Collingwood winnings. Mm. And then fucking I'll get gypped there. That's true. Um, Collingwood have come back strong after their big loss to Richmond like four weeks ago, five weeks ago, whatever it was. Had a decent last month. Beat Essendon in a bruising encounter, um, which is good preparation for finals. I think the buyers come at a good time for them. Who's going to win this game, Bush? Ooh. I love how you always say that like you don't know the question's coming. <laughs> it's Ooh. more I've got to think about the answer. But you knew the question was coming. Yeah, but I still like to think of a, how, a well-thought-out response. I'd, I'd yeah. probably lean towards probably the cat. Okay, a margin. Clive's probably a couple of goals, 12 points sort of thing. I just think their top end just more... In form at the moment, sure. But been playing more like some of the Collingwood guys, top guys, be coming back in off injuries and in and out a bit more. It's a good argument. I am going to disagree with you. I'm going to tip Ooh. the pies. I think I respect both of these sides as a genuine uh, contender this year. I just think Collingwood are going to win. Um, I don't think the MCG with home field factor. advantage. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> if, I don't know. It's a big final. I don't think that's going to worry the Cats as it's much. Um, I just think Collingwood are primed. Mm. But I did just say the same thing about the Cats. I think it's going to be a cracking game of footy. Yeah, it'll be game of the round, probably. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. You, you and I differ. You say Geelong, I say Collingwood. But we'll move on now to the Giants and the Doggies. Elimination final. Um, we'll start off, what was your perception of the Giants this year and how would they feel about where they're placed? They probably about where you expected them, really, even... Mm. Uh, They'd lost Shield and a few other guys in the off season sort of thing, but they still had plenty of talent. They've had a bit of bad luck with injuries, with Cornelio going down. Whitfield was in and out of the side a bit. And they still really strung it together pretty good. Mm. They weren't quite as good as some of those other top teams, like in terms of talent and where they were at, but they were still in the thick of it. I I'll disagree with you and I'll say I think the Giants have bottled it. What I blown think, it? Yeah, I think Okay, admittedly, maybe no one was really considering them at the start of the year to win the flag or anything like that. I think I had them on the edge of the four or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they'll ballpark top four. That's yeah. where everyone sort of had them, ballpark yeah. top four, like that. I guess if you can compare to it to that, um, then it's not so bad. But, um, you know, the, the time is now for them to start delivering on the promise. They, they are, were losing players. They, there was always a threat they're going to lose more. I know Cornelio is a big signing, but... The earlier this year, they looked, they and Geelong looked like the two teams in the competition. Mm. I remember saying that. Um, they were the only team to beat them at GMHBA this year, nah. the Giants. Um, and that was, that was really, later in the year, that win, though, wasn't it? No, nah, it was around four or five. Around five. They were the first team to beat Geelong. They around beat five, them down six. there later in the year, I swore. No. Nah. I swore that was later in the year. No, nah, it was like round five. I'll check. Um, I, need to, I need to be proven right. <laughs> Pretty sure Geelong won their first four. Yeah, it was round four. Huh. Yeah, Geelong. Uh, GWS won. It was a game uh, Callan Ward did his ACL again. Uh. But um, at that point of the year and even later in the year with Whitfield performing the way he was, Whitfield and Cornelia were two of the best players in the competition at that point of the year. And I know they've been done by injuries, but I think to slide the way to sixth, yeah, it was sixth. Kelly was out for chunks as well. True, true. I, I, do, I do think they've had... Fairly bad luck, but so are the other contenders. Hmm. You know, Geelong and Collingwood have copped it as bad. Oh, sorry, Richmond and Collingwood have copped it as bad as anyone in the competition. But I'd say Richmond and Geelong were better than GWS coming into the season. Uh, yeah, Richmond and Collingwood. Yeah, yeah that's Richmond true. But yeah. I mean, just mean like um, the the talent on their list is still quite significant, yeah. and they were still playing really good football. And Whitfield, like I say, Whitfield and Cornelio were like two huh. top two, sorry, two top five players. That, at, at, right. at the time Whitfield they were talking about Is the best player in the comp At one point Cornelia was leading the Brownlow At some point yeah. this year I reckon um, So my point is I reckon this is a really Flat end of the season for them they, Especially in the last couple of weeks I know every team's entitled to a slump But they got annihilated by Hawthorne um, Just like West Coast did Yeah I was going to say Who else got annihilated <laughs> Still that was an unacceptable performance That was way worse than West Coast performance then the doggies. That I know, was disastrous. I know the doggies. doggies yeah, exactly. The doggies are red hot as well, but they still lost by eleven goals yeah. against the finals like competitor. Um, I think it's kind of gone begging for them a little bit this year. Mm. There's, like I said, like Cornelia. This is they picked the wrong time to slam pole. I'll give you that. Yeah, it's not even that. It's just the fact that they have missed the top four, mm. and I think that's a blow. It is. A, I think it's a strong top four this year. To be fair to them, 
But um, I think internally, this is a this is a bad year for him. Mm. Personally, um, Canelio and Delidio might be back, but I don't think for week one of the finals. I think uh-huh. they're still a couple of weeks away, according to the injury list. Green and Hopper are listed as Tess. Those are two important players as well. Um, I think the signing of Canelio will be good for their culture and uh-huh. also their maybe their um. What are you, because he took a fair bit less a year yeah, compared to what Carlton were throwing at him. 400 think, grand a year or something, I think yep, it was. Over seven years, it's uh, $2.8 million. And plus, I remember Carlton were going to pay him up front a big chunk in his first year. They were going to give him like $2 million up front or something. That would make sense considering where their list is at. That would make yeah. sense. But um, yeah, so like you could say that that will probably enhance their mindset. They'll probably be feeling good. It's certainly a good endorsement for their culture, um, as others have said. And I, I just think it's a big blow that they, they've lost to this team at this venue mm. two weeks ago by 11 goals. That's the timing's not... very bad. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right, we'll move on to the Bulldogs, though, before I keep roasting the Giants too much. To contrast them, they've been absolutely red hot. Um, mm. And to and actually contrast their own premiership year because that was the first year of the, pre- of the week one finals bye. Uh-huh. And, and the Bulldogs went into that final series totally out of form. They'd won 15 games, finished seventh. Um, and 15 games, to be honest, usually gets you top four. Yeah. But nonetheless, they finished that season so poorly, had the bye, and then came out and smashed everyone in their path. And this year, they finished the season smashing everyone in their path and now having a bye. So I do wonder if that's maybe going to have a negative effect. Maybe they run out of a bit of momentum. Mm-hmm. I'm not too sure. Midfield trio. Yeah. What do you think of it? Pretty good trio. Uh, yeah, so I'll say it was um, McRae, Bont, and Dunkley. Uh, and then Hunter's not a bad fourth ring in as well. He's more of a traditional wing by the sounds. Hunter, he's sort True. of turned more into a full-time winger. True. It is It is a powerful team. I even remember hearing during the All-Australian debates like how they always say every year, they need genuine wingers. Mm. And like Lockie Hunter was a guy floated as an All-Australian genuine winger yeah. rather than a midfielder stuck on a wing sort of thing. Yeah, that's an interesting debate, that one. Yeah. If you're picking wingers, you have to cut out so many worthy All-Australian midfielders because yeah. then you just go Gaff. And, and I don't think Gaff deserved to All-Australian this year anyway. But, uh-huh. um, Brad Hill probably would have made the 40 if you had traditional wingers. True, true, yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably. He got gypped there, I reckon, but I digress. Yeah, the top 40 doesn't mean much, but I, mm. I totally know where you're coming from. Um, yeah, so the only thing with the dogs, like I feel like they're a bit too midfield heavy. Their defensive stocks mm. are a little bit weak. They lost rough head now, which would burn them so much because he's playing so well at Collingwood. Yeah, they've really optimised him at Collingwood, that's for sure. Mm. Do you think this end of the season by the dogs gives them confidence and do you think they've kind of re-emerged as a title chance or do you think it's a flash in the pan? The 16 was a flash in the pan, so it's tough to say. They, If they can get a couple of wins in these finals and really get that belief in their group, mm. they could probably continue it. But if they had an uninspiring game or two in the finals, it might mm. cause the opposite effect and they might, be, they might do a Melbourne. That's true. How do you think Bont, just quickly, stacks up against Cripps in five as some of the one of the better mid tall midfielders in the comp? He's probably he's not as crash and ball as the other two you guys mentioned, but he's probably closer to five in that aerial ability, that other factors he brings to the game. Cripps is just a ball. He doesn't really do some of the stuff as much of the stuff that Bont and Five sort of do. Yeah, that's true. Tips. Probably the dogs. It's hard to go against them. Probably 20. Okay. I think the Giants will come to play, but I think the Bulldogs are a better team. And Mm. I'm going to tip the Bulldogs in a thriller by three points. Ooh. Yeah. Stankly, that one. All right, we'll move on to the last game quickly. Uh, Brisbane Lions versus Richmond at the Gabba. And I think a lot of neutrals are thinking this is probably the game they all want to watch. Potential grand final preview. Brisbane, perception of where they're at. I've had a great year, so I've decided I've had a great year. Yeah, I teed that one up for you to smash out yeah. of the park. That was an easy question. Well, it's just such a hard question to answer, but yeah, yeah, they've done really well. Like People saw the potential. Everyone was like, even going into everyone was like, yeah, they'll make the eight. They probably didn't anticipate mm. second with a genuine shot in the last round to be the minor premier sort of thing. Yeah, that's true. The, for me... Um, MCG question mark is too strong though mm. but I mean that's not really what we're here to talk about today we're talking about whether they're going to beat Richmond at the Gabba um, do you they say that their loss to the Richmond at the MCG gave them real belief do you think it should it's hard to take, take a belief from a loss but 
you, there's manners in losing. So if you felt like you'd done the stuff that you feel brings out the best in your game, but other stuff fell off, but you feel like you've brought what you feel like you need to bring, mm. that helps. They lost by five goals, though. Mm. And it took Lockie Neal having probably the best game of his career, 51 possessions and 14 clearances. I've heard some discussion on like some of the AFL talk shows about that game. They feel like he did a bit of a... They sort of get, gave him a bit of a titch, saying he just sort of right. got cheap ball. Fair enough. I didn't feel like he necessarily okay. impacted the game with those 51 possessions. They but, even discussed how Rich, they feel like Richmond almost led him off the chain and get those 50 touches. That's interesting. That's something I've criticised Neil for in the past. I, I must admit, I didn't actually catch this game. Yeah, Richmond me neither. Brisbane. Um, I was too yeah. depressed. You were watching Port and Frio. I was too I depressed. I wasn't even watching that. I was just, Are we? <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I was just going off the stats And he did have yeah. Statistically yeah, the, his best just, game Yeah Okay But, but I've heard questions Of the impact of the statistics Yeah So maybe it's You'd rather Him have 51 touches Than a few guys like Zorko and McCluggage Having 30 each Sort of thing Very rather true. Neil just Dominate the ball 100% I, that, I think that's Pretty um, A good assessment But um, I think there's another caveat On Brisbane They've probably had One of the best injury runs All year Definitely. They don't have that front. any injuries to speak of. I think Christensen was injured, but he's not. I think he's okay now. Fringe 22, yeah. I guess. Anyway. Um, they've also had a bottom five. Oh, sorry, not bottom five, but they've also had a favourable draw, I think. Yeah, I've, yeah, good fixture, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Everyone, so yeah. They won 16 games. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying they're not good enough. I think they're a, I think they're probably like the fourth or fifth best team in the competition. That's my opinion. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, we're talking whether they can win this week at the Gabba. Very um, possible. They come o- up against uh, Richmond, who are notoriously bad travellers. Mm. Um, so, Richmond, we'll talk about Richmond now as well. They've been dogged by injuries, as we kind of alluded to as well, but they've come into this season absolutely red hot, and we're seeing a dynamic from Richmond we haven't before this season. Tom Lynch and Jack Rewalt are the best one-two punch key forward combo in the game. They've overtaken right. J.K. and Darling, absolutely. Um yeah, this is the first Tom Lynch final series we've ever seen as well. So uh, it would be interesting to see exactly what impact he brings. Um, it, I feel like he can probably impact a finals game more than he impacts a regular season game because he's sort of that more big target. Like mm. finals games more congested, more tied in. Those big guys that just they said like for it. a while they used to say that key big key forwards win you finals, and I don't. No. I think that stopped being true for a little while there, but now it seems. Like I think, well, J.K. and Darling were big factors last year. Yeah, um, yeah and uh, Boyd. <laughs> yeah, mind you, he kind of it was rocked. more of a rock. Yeah, really. yeah, that's true. He did kind of rock yeah. it. But I um, mean, there's been examples of key yeah. forwards tearing apart finals lately. Um, interstate's a big test for them because they've mm. been very poor over over. Uh, sorry, in other states in the last two years. So last year they lost four out of five games interstate, only beat the Gold Coast. This year they've beaten Port and Fremantle in Perth, yeah. and I think that's it. Um, I don't think that I don't think they've played. The, they didn't play the Gabba this year. No, I don't think so. This is going to be a night game. It's going to be dewy. It's a contested probably a game. Oh, what think you that, think Stuart Jew is going to come yeah. up in the Gold Coast, eat a big box of chips, and yeah. enjoy the game? He'll play as two players. He'll have two numbers on his back. Um, but uh, it's going to be dewy. Richmond's not actually a strong contested t- team. If this game gets real contested, I think Brisbane actually plays into their hands a bit more. Um, Certainly with guys like Neil. Yeah, I think having said that. Um, oh, well, actually, I was going to say as well, the buy might have come at a bad time for Richmond as well. Mm. Because yeah, they've been pretty, they're full of momentum. And uh, I just think a buy interrupting momentum can be a bad thing. Uh, what I will say, though, is that Richmond are hungry. So last year... It was disappointing for them. They were more or less... They were somewhat washed away by history last year, to borrow mm. a phrase from another podcaster. Um, in the sense that they... Some people thought they were best team all year. I think that is debatable considering their fixture last year. But anyway... 18 and 4, and universally considered the premiership favourite all year, gets smashed by Collingwood with the prelim. They will be devastated. Well, they would have been devastated, absolutely no doubt. I'm, I know they were. So this year, like Collingwood, they've got that heartbreak. They've got that mm-hmm. momentum. Whereas Brisbane, I might kind of feel like there's almost a sense of we're really happy to be here. Mm. So how much of a factor that will play? It's a lot really of teams assess. that are in that situation I found will have like, if they do make the grand, you usually have a bit of a, oh my God, we're in the grand final. and. Mm dumbstruck and yeah. can get taken out, taken out by a more experienced team. Mm. Well, even just um, even just a final. Yeah. This is a really tough one to tip. Who are you thinking? Probably Brizzy up there. They've yeah. really turned the Gabriel into a 
strong place for them and they mm-hmm. know they got to capitalise on the gabble while they're there because the grand final is ultimately the MCG. That's true. But the less time you can spend there and the more time you can spend at the Gabba getting there, the better off they're going to be. That's true. Brisbane win this. They get a home prelim and they only play at the MCG at the grand final should yeah. they make it. So, um, big incentive. Again, I'm going to disagree with you for the third time. Ooh. I think Richmond's going to win. But I, again, I can see other team winning. It's not It's not like I'm yeah. really fixed into this. But if I'm going to have to pick a team, I'm going to tip Richmond. I think they'll click. It'll be a tough game. I think Richmond will win by 18 points. I'd probably say Brizzy... In terms of margin, I'd probably say five, six. I think it'll be close. That'll be the close one. Well, it's good that we all we had three different tips because it oh. shows how uh, up in the air this final series is. We haven't been blessed with a whole lot of really good final series lately. Mm. I think last year we had one of the goat grand finals. We had two shit prelims, two average semis. I think there was a Collingwood and West Coast in week one was good. 2017 was a shocking final series. So many beltings. That was the Geelong straight sets, was it? Or was that uh, 18? Yeah, no, was no and Geelong eight, made a prelim. Yes. Yeah, Geelong made a prelim in 17. What was the year they went straight sets? I swore that was... Put me on the spot with this one. Uh, uh, so they didn't make finals last year, so I think it was the year before they went straight sets. They made finals last year. They, got, they went out in the oh. first week to Melbourne. Ah. Oh. Yeah, Melbourne beat them in real week one. It was fifth versus eighth. Oh yeah, and Melbourne won from eighth. I can't, oh. man, that's straight sets. When did they go out straight sets? Sixteen, maybe. Maybe sixteen. Yeah. Uh, Danger won the brown though that year. Oh, man. Uh, it's it's just so far back in my memory. Yeah. Me there. Um, so I know that was an average final series. Is back, right. Okay. To bring it back to topic. Yeah, but anyway, twenty seventeen was real bad. We had one good final. Even the grand uh, final was terrible. Uh, again, the Eagles were involved in the good final. That was the shoey after oh, the sign. But it was the shoey after the yeah. final one. That was a famous final. Yeah, I was devastated at the end of that one. I'm not going <laughs> Really? Well, I was with a few smug Eagles fans who were carrying on like fucking pork chops and I was just sitting there like... <sighs> that was one of the most stressful games I've ever watched. But anyway, yeah. we, we digress. Um, Bush, Bush. T- we've done the predictions for the four games. Yep. Bush's... Sorry, Joyce has done his prediction video. You should check it out on the channel if you haven't already. He's given us his predicted premiere. I'm going to do mine in a video maybe later next week. But today, right now, I want your prediction. Who's going to win the flag? Despite me predicting that they'll lose in Brisbane, I'm probably going to have to go with Richmond at the mm-hmm. moment, I feel like. Because even if they do lose, the re- most of the rest of their games will be in Melbourne, won't they? Mm, yeah. yeah, they will. Yeah, yeah, so that's pretty much neutral for them from there. Very true. Yeah. It, can, it does happen that teams yeah. lose in week one and win the flag. That does yeah. happen. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, I, uh, I won't say mine yet, but um, yeah. So if they, Brisbane beat them Richmond will play the Doggies in week two if they win yeah. or, or GWS yeah. at the MCG and then they'll have a prelim against like Geelong Collingwood or yeah. something like that and then a final against Geelong Collingwood or Brisbane so. yeah. probably a rematch yeah when's the last time we've had a round one qualifying as the rematch in the Grandy last year oh, last yeah. Coast coming yeah. Yeah. yeah that's right <laughs> that was the first time ever we've had the same team win both of those games though huh. first time in history yeah they usually split them don't they yeah yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching and or listening to the True Footy podcast. That was just week one of the finals. Like we said, we'll try and get together every week to do something like this. So, um, yeah, it's been real. Yeah. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I'm doing lots of videos at the moment, um, and it is final season, baby. So, yeah, click that subscribe button. <laughs> Hit that notification bell. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll try and get together to do a live stream this next weekend as well. So yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Cheers. See you next time. Lovely.